Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me. And I'm back with the finale of What If Deku was trained by Frieza. And damn, this took me so long, I realized, to make the finale on. I completely apologize. That is completely my fault. I get caught up in a lot of other series, I feel like, sometimes. And, you know, I just forget to do the last parts of some series. I mean, not necessarily, uh, not that I forget, but it's more like I get caught up with everything else and then I'm like, oh my god, it's been six days since I've done an episode on this. So yeah, um, uh, this will be the finale of What If Deku Was Trained by Frieza. And if you enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'm not going to waste any more of your time and we're going to get right into this What If. Let's get it. Bakugo and Midoriya look at each other and just roll their eyes. The fights go as planned until Bakugo and Midoriya try to plan. Katsuki, as much as I don't want to plan with you, we need to plan. <laughs> I don't need to plan with you, you damn nerd. What makes you think you can beat All Might on your own? Bakugo rolls his eyes and scoffs, saying that he refuses to work with him. After all the fights are finished, it is now time for Bakugo and Midoriya's fight against All Might. They walk into the fake city and Midoriya tries to plan, but Bakugo refuses. Katsuki, really? Dude, just you just want to lose to All Might, don't you? Midoriya follows behind Bakugo, but at a distance. A blast of wind comes from their comes their way. And Midoriya easily dodges it, but Bakugo gets hit and keeps moving forward. Bakugo tries to fight All Might, but gets destroyed and is practically unconscious, so Midoriya flies over, saving him. I really didn't want to save him, but I knew he would do this. Young Midoriya, you cannot defeat me alone. You should have tried to convince young Bakugo to work with you. I tried that All Might, but be but me beating you alone is honestly still up for grabs. All Might looks at him in shock, thinking, wait, does he really think he can beat him? Midoriya charges at All Might, and they both clash with each other. Midoriya using his superior martial arts, he's able to actually keep up with the raw power of All Might. Young Midoriya. You, we all know you cannot keep up this fast-paced battle to keep up with my power. Oh, All Might, I know. I just wanted to see how far I've come. All Might looks at him in shock while the ground around Midoriya begins to shatter and the area begins to shake as a gold aura reveals itself around Midoriya. All Might, this fight is over. Midoriya slams All Might into the wall using his telekinesis and follows up with a bunch of barrage of key, bl key blasts as he makes his way to the exit as well as grabbing Bakugo. All Might charges at them once again and Midoriya throws Bakugo through the exit. Midoriya then begins charging a massive attack. You know Frieza called this a supernova, but I was never, I never really knew how to make it, well, until now. He throws the attack at All Might and break and makes a break for the exit. All Might smashes the blast and it blows up mid midair. Bakugo and Midoriya pass. All Might looks to see Midoriya at the exit with a knocked out Bakugo. All Might walks over and tells Midoriya that the display was very impressive. Aizawa then announces that everyone will be going to the training camp. No matter if they passed or didn't. The next day comes and the class heads off to the forest lodge, and they, when they arrive at a nearby cliff, they are greeted by the wild wild pussycats. Aizawa then tells them all that this is the beginning of the camp, and the mountain they were on then slings them off. The class right, basically then runs through various monsters, but Midoriya and Momo easily fight their way through because of how much damage their ki blasts do. Especially with Midoriya, but Momo has been learning Key Blast and, and to control her key a lot better, so, so she's actually pretty powerful. They arrive at the camp, and Aizawa explains to them that they will be training for the next week 
to grow their quirks, but for tonight, they can take the day to rest. Midoriya sees a little kid and approaches him. Sub little one. As he says this, the boy by the name of Koda turns and punches him in the family jewels. Oh god, that hurt. Why? Why would you do that? The, ne the next day then, the day then ends and they begin their training. Midoriya just does some meditation mostly to increase his key control and the rest of class do basically what they did in canon. The night approached and everyone was eating together until Midoriya realized that Koda went off on his own without food. So he decided to take him food while he, everyone was busy. He flew to the mountain and saw Koda sitting on it. Hey Koda, I brought you some food. Whatever, just leave me alone. I actually wanted to ask you something. Like, why do you hate heroes? Koda refuses to answer and just says that they are dumb and being a hero is stupid. As he says this, a voice can be heard from the shadows. I agree, kid. Heroes are stupid. <laughs> a villain by the name of Muscular stood on the mountain with them, saying, saying they are looking for a corkless kid named Midoriya and someone named Bakugo Katsuki. Koda, run. I will handle him. Koda begins to run away, and Muscular tries to attack him, but Midoriya blasts him into the mountain. Going after a little kid? Even for a villain, that's low. Now tell me, why, why do you want Bakugo? Well, by the sound of it, you must be the other kid, huh? But we want Bakugo to join us. But for you, we want your cork. The hand guy refuses to believe you're corkless. Muscular charges at Midoriya, punching him in the face. But Midoriya doesn't move an inch. Muscular, I will give you one more chance to leave, but I will be forced to take action if you refuse. He stands there in shock that his punch did nothing to this kid. Fine by me, Mr. Villain. Midoriya screams and a gold aura erupts around him, and he begins to beat Muscular into the ground slamming him a bunch of times using his telekinesis. Muscular is then knocked out, and Midoriya takes Koda to Aizawa. They arrive, and when Midoriya is flying above Aizawa, his voice just suddenly stops, and he is gone in an instant. Problem child, what? Where did he go? Midoriya, hours later, wakes up in a bar, with Bakugo tied up in the chair next to him. Damn, I let my guard down. Multiple villains enter the room. Oh, you're awake. Now for some questions. First you, Midoriya. How are you this strong even though you are supposedly quirkless? Well, I can tell you already think that I have a quirk, so why are you even asking? Because if you are quirkless, I want to know how you got so strong. Why would I even tell you that? Shigaraki walks over to Bakugo and grabs his neck with four fingers. Tell me already or he's dead. Bakugo looks at Shigaraki in shock. Why would I care if he dies? I hate this kid. Shigaraki looks at Midoriya in shock and tells Bakugo that why not become a villain and join them that even this kid doesn't care about him. Question. Mr. Hand Face Guy, why did you think that these cuffs would stop me? Midoriya blasts his and Bakugo's cuffs off, and as he does this, Bakugo blasts Shigaraki in the face. The entire League of Villains, as well as Bakugo and Midoriya, get ready for a fight until a knock can be heard at the door, distracting them. Pizza! Who the hell ordered pizza? Pro heroes including All Might come through the wall and knock out all the villains, telling both Midori and Bakugo that they were very brave. But then out of nowhere, a portal took both of them to the middle of the city, and the person waiting was all for one. All Might arrived on the scene, and Bakugo and Midoriya were eventually able to escape to a nearby city, and they begin watching the fight. Wait, is that Frieza? Frieza entered the battle with All Might to support him, and they were able to defeat All for One with relative ease. 
but still All Might was forced into retirement. Yue then decided on a dorm system and everyone went back to school a couple days later. When they arrived, Aizawa explained that they'll be working on their new super moves, but also getting their ready for their provisional hero license exam. They all leave to the gym, but Aizawa stops Midoriya. Problem child, I have some good news I think. You actually don't need to take the provisional hero license exam. Frieza wanted me to surprise you that he actually submitted a form to get you one for the work you've done in the past at his agency. He felt you were more than ready. Aizawa then gives Midori his license. Are you serious? This is insane. Thank you. Well, thank your dad and yourself. You're a good kid. They head to the gym and work on their super moves, as Midoriya thinks that Aizawa really sucks at compliments. The day of the provisional hero license exam, Midoriya actually got just to watch his classmates with Aizawa to see almost all of them pass, except for, well, Bakugo and Shoto because of their actions toward the end of the exam. The, the day that the big three came to talk about work studies, though, Midoriya wasn't actually there. Aizawa told him that he could start early if he wanted to go and work with his father. So Midoriya was working with Frieza, doing patrols and researching a threat that came to their attention via a pro hero named Nidai. He told them that there was a man by the name of Overhaul that has been dealing with the League of Villains, and not only that, but supposedly he is making quirk erasing bullets. Some days pass and their research continues until Frieza decided to have Midoriya go on a patrol with one of Nidai's work-study students. Midoriya arrives to see Mirio. Nidai greeted them both and told them that they would be going on just a simple patrol and if they somehow found Overhaul to obviously avoid conflict. They agree and head off together. So Mirio, right? Yeah, that's me! Or you can call me Lamillion. Oh, nice to meet you, you can call me Midoriya or Kariza, I guess. Either is really fine. So, I have a question for you. Is it true that you're quirkless? Midoriya smiles and nods, saying that he's just trained a lot. So, Lamillion, you have two quirks, don't you? He looks. M Mirio looks at him in shock, but as Midoriya says this, a little girl runs into both of them. Oh, are you okay, little one? She hugs Midoriya, and someone from the shadows begins to talk. She is fine, no need to worry. Come here, Eri. Stop bothering these heroes. They both realize that this man is Overhaul. Mirio begins to, to basically tone down the situation, saying that kids can be a hassle sometimes, but we wouldn't be heroes if we couldn't handle a little one. He smiles and Overhaul does as well. Eri then begins to whisper, Please help me. Midori's eyes grow wide and begins to remember his mother being dragged out of that car all those years ago. Using telekinesis, he basically just holds Overhaul in place. Mirio, take take Eri to Sir Nidai's agency and tell him the situation. I will keep him here. Mirio nods and leaves. <laughs> what? <laughs> you think you can beat me alone, kid? Overhaul tries to move but can't. Why can't I? Oh, I'm holding you in place until reinforcements come. Overhaul begins to struggle, but the telekinesis is too strong for him to escape. You stupid kid. You don't, under you don't understand what you're doing. I'm trying to make change in this world. Midoriya ignores him and just pushes him into the wall. Mirio returns, but out of nowhere, a giant man appears. What? How? I held him in place. Dumb kid, I hit my tracker when you put me in the, into the wall. Midoriya realizes that he messed up, and he slams Overhaul into the wall hard. O Overhaul then gets out of the wall while they are being distracted, and he combines himself with the, that gigantic man. Now both of you will die. Midoriya begins flying around, attacking Overhaul at all angles, telling him that he may be stronger but he sure is slow. Is slow. Mirio follows suit, attacking as well. 
He punches Mirio, landing cleanly, but Midoriya catches him in his telekinesis and slams him before he could follow up on Mirio. Reinforcements then arrive, and they all are able to lock up Overhaul, luckily because of, because of how strong Midoriya's telekinesis is. The next day, pro heroes are sent to the, the base of the Shiha Zaikai, and they capture the rest of the villains. Back at Frieza's agency. Wow, kid, you did it. You truly are a hero now, huh? Yeah, I guess so, but I still have a lot to learn. As Midoriya says this, a beam of yellow light covers Frieza. Wait, what is happening? Uh, 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 are you okay? I did my job, kiddo. Now I guess they're sending me back to my world. What? No, wait. Don't leave me. Kiddo, you are ready. You will soon be the strongest in this world. Believe that. Just be the best hero you can be, Midoriya. Midoriya begins to cry and Frieza vanishes in the, bl the blinding yellow light. I will be the best hero. I promise that. For you. Thank you. And that is the end of this What If. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. I know this episode was a little shorter, but there was a lot of workarounds that I was thinking about that I wanted to do initially. And when I realized I was done, I realized how long the video was. And I was like, oh, wow, this is going to be a lot shorter than most of my finales. But I hope you guys still enjoyed this what if in its entirety if it if you guys really wanted to see see it go into the manga i totally could do that but it just needs to i mean just blow this video up and i'll do it but um but yeah i really enjoyed making this what if i mean obviously the brand is golden frieza i love golden frieza that's like my thing but um but yeah i really hope y'all enjoyed watching this as much as i enjoyed making it and yeah that's about it um, if you have any suggestions for future what ifs, make sure to leave it in the comment section below and I'll catch you all later. Have an amazing day. Peace.